I once had a patient who needed hip surgery, but he was so depressed that we almost canceled his surgery. He was in so much pain, he was staying at home, he couldn't go out and exercise, and he was becoming more and more socially isolated the whole time. He had become so uninterested in doing anything, what we call anhedonia, that when I asked him if he even wanted his surgery, he was like, nah. We ended up doing the surgery because the benefits outweighed the risks. And it was a good thing that we did because within two weeks, his wife told me that her husband was a whole new man. It was like he had been reboot or reset and his physical and emotional pain was profoundly improved. So did the surgery and anesthesia literally reboot this man's brain? I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And I believe that they may have played a big part and I'm gonna share with you what my holistic healing approach looks like for patients who are struggling with physical and emotional pain, and importantly, why you can't treat one without treating the other. And it all starts by acknowledging the 80 plus billions of neurons and trillions of nerve connections throughout your mind and body that underlie your physical and emotional pain. And to understand this guide to healing the body and mind, you need to understand a little bit of neuroscience. So I put timestamps below because I value your time and you can skip ahead. Rigidity underlies nearly all human pain and suffering and altered states of consciousness can potentially reset the rigid loops that we physically and psychologically can get stuck in. For example, nearly all physical pain is rooted in some stiffness or tightness, whether muscle, tendon, nerves, or even organs. When they become tight and stiff, either they directly stimulate pain or they'll pull or tug on somewhere else in the body to radiate or refer the pain. That's exactly how shooting pains and trigger points feel, isn't it? Eventually, if that part of the body stays stiff or tight long enough, it can snap both literally and figuratively. And this is why babies feel so soft and are so much less prone to tearing muscles because they haven't tightened up yet. Emotional and psychological pain are nearly identical. And so many of my patients with depression, anxiety, or PTSD tell me that they feel stuck in a rigid loop of perseverations or ruminations, these thought loops of thinking about the same things over and over again. If they're of the past, we tend to label them or call them depression. If those thoughts, and perseverations are of the future, we'll call that anxiety. And because they are fundamentally so similar, that's why depression and anxiety often coexist together. Does this match your experience? Let me know in the comments below. I call this emotional rigidity because when we get emotionally stiff or tight, we lose the flexibility that we need to get out of these often toxic thought loops. We lose our ability to tolerate ambiguity or uncertainty. We may begin to even fear or avoid unknown settings. It's like your nerves are digging a deeper and deeper groove and it's painful to stay in it, but you can't climb out. On top of that, because all of your muscles are controlled by your nerves, when your nerves get hyperactivated, that translates to muscle tightness and muscular rigidity as well, which can in turn cause more physical pain. This can also lead to your nerves literally tightening up and becoming more sensitive to pain. What we call central sensitization, which refers to the nerves in your spinal cord becoming so sensitized that things that should not be painful are perceived as painful by your brain. Imagine it like a super tight guitar string where the slightest touch will cause it to vibrate like mad. And those vibrations can manifest in us as snapping back at people, at feeling stabbing pains in our body, or even triggering PTSD flashbacks. This is one of the key reasons you can't treat physical pain without acknowledging and treating the emotional pain and vice versa. Altered states of consciousness have a profound potential to reset and soften these rigid loops that our central nervous system can become ingrained in over time. Those loops that underlie our physical and psychological pain simultaneously. This is where my patient was before his hip surgery and something catalyzed that sudden reset throughout his mind and body 
during the surgery. Anesthesia has long been known to induce rapid changes in our state of consciousness with varying degrees of healing and aha moments of insight. The problem is that general anesthesia is like a sledgehammer that wipes your memories. With these powerful medications, we're overriding what lower doses of anesthesia could potentially do to soften those rigid thought cycles. And this is where things get interesting because that patient was having hip surgery with a spinal anesthesia where I numbed the nerves around his spinal cord so that he wouldn't feel the pain and wouldn't need nearly as much anesthesia. He didn't need that sledgehammer. He just had mild IV sedation throughout the hip surgery. And it may have been that low dose of anesthesia paired with the simultaneous caring of a compassionate healer to fix a root cause pain problem in the hip that gave him a new lease on life. In fact, it was through witnessing anesthesia experiences patient after patient like this, paired with my personal meditation practice, that gave me an appreciation for the healing properties that altered states of consciousness can have on us. If we can relax our rigid minds and bodies, so much pain and suffering can be relieved. The problem is how do we do it when we're already so rigid and stuck? We can do it with medications and with our thoughts and both can dramatically reboot the central nervous system. We use the word neuroplasticity to describe these changes that restore cognitive flexibility to the mind and body. Altered states of consciousness like anesthesia, psychedelics, our dreams when we're sleeping, or meditative states can all support this neuroplasticity to soften these rigidities throughout our nervous system. In my holistic healing center, where patients are suffering too deeply for meditative states to be accessible to them, I use IV ketamine and the stellate ganglion block, or SGB, to provide a powerful neuroplastic state to enhance their cognitive flexibility. Because once you can break free from the shackles of that rigid and tight nervous system, that neuroplastic property can set you up for a rapid reset with potentially sustainable relief. For example, IV ketamine induces neuroplasticity in the cortex of the brain and in the spinal cord where so much of our physical and emotional pain lives. In parallel, the stellate ganglion block induces neuroplasticity in the limbic regions of the brain and in the heart where so much of the PTSD fight-flight response lives. Unlike traditional medications that can be viewed as band-aids in some instances, these neuroplasticity enhancers are providing flexibility at the root cause of your nervous system in the rigid neuronal loops. These interventions aren't meant to be repeated every day, every week, or even every month. They're designed to harness your healing capacity for long-term and sustained healing. Once the rigid loops are softened, the nervous system can learn to replace them with new loops that are less painful and more flexible. It can restore that tolerance of ambiguity and uncertainty that is lost when we're in survival mode. It's not automatic per se, and you have to work for it. And that's where the long-term benefit of these approaches comes from. It's also why having support either from a psychological therapist or a physical therapist is so important for the long-term success of these body-mind healing techniques. And while it can be so effective, it would be wrong to say that it's a miracle or a panacea. It does not work for everyone, even though 70 to 80% of folks might find invaluable relief with these modalities. And it's why you need to speak with your doctor first before embarking on this journey. Because that cognitive flexibility can have such profound implications and trickle-down effects, like in my patient after hip surgery, this is why so many patients feel that they accomplish years of therapy in just a matter of weeks when they're going through this experience. The more flexible the mindset, the greater the healing that can occur. It's like the difference between trying to reshape cement versus remold clay. One is gonna be so much easier than the other. By the way, if you're learning something new, please share with your loved ones. And remember to check out my San Francisco Clinic's website, claris-health.com, to learn more about this medical information to hopefully help you take back control of your health and healing. Now, let's talk about this phrase, neurons that fire together, wire together, and why it is so important for this healing paradigm. When our nervous system goes through the same physical motions or psychological thought patterns over and over again, those 80 plus billion neurons get really efficient at doing that over and over again. They connect together stronger and stronger and optimize their connectivity to be really efficient at doing that. 
And that's why we say neurons that fire together wire together. They're literally more anatomically connected for more efficient transfer of information. They reconnect and reshape themselves to be able to do that action over and over again. It's like forming habits. Eventually, they become second nature. And this can support life-saving reflexes, no question, like catching your step if you trip on a curb, where that spinal cord reflex can save your life and prevent you from smacking down on the concrete. It can also support maladaptive reflexes like becoming avoidant or argumentative in the face of a trigger. When your nerves habitually stay tight in these fight-flight responses, they're more prone to releasing fight-flight hormones like noradrenaline or adrenaline. And those fight-flight hormones can lead to painful muscle spasms, they can worsen migraines, they can even turn your hair white. And on the psychological side, those same nerves can activate painful perseveration loops that lead to us feeling stuck in depression or anxiety. And that's what makes this potentially rapid reset so valuable, whether from IV ketamine, the stellate ganglion block, dreamlike states, or meditative states. They can break these habitual nerve cycles to give you a window of opportunity to change the game. Let me know if you've experienced healing from any altered states of consciousness like ketamine or anesthesia or meditative states. And don't forget that you need to speak with your doctor before ever starting any journeys like this. Please hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with all of my medical content. Let me know in the comments what you want to learn about next and remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.